What up, what up, what up? Welcome back once again from Bogies in Clifton, New Jersey. This is Peace Corner. I'm your host, Peter Soprano. To my right, a.k.a. the big man right here, the, even though he don't have a belt right now. But <laughs> nah. The big man right here, Dre, D-Money Drizzy Dre. What's happening, people? And listen, we had a good week last week from the NFL. We both were over 500. Yeah, man, that was great, man. That was really good. Hopefully you guys made some money because if you listened to us, it would have been good. Yeah. Especially Dre was really hot last week. He, especially with the uh, especially with the, uh, with the the underdogs. I mean, like, I, I know I picked Washington to cover, but they won outright. I picked uh, Denver to, you know, cover shit like that. They won outright. But, again, you did a great job, too. Um, shit, you caught up at the end, man. Dude, you, I missed the prime time, dude. Dude, you went three for three. Time. You went three for three for Thanksgiving. Yep. At the Monday Sunday night and, and the Sunday, Sunday night too. Again, if you're this in prime guy, time, I got you. Yeah. This guy's prime time, man. Listen, and uh, we got a lot of games. We got a lot of prime time games coming up this weekend too. Exactly, so, you know. big games coming up. It's championship week in college football, so it's going to be huge games. A lot of money is going to be bet on those games. And and one thing, one piece of advice I have: odds makers usually add an extra point or two to favorites because. They're, suppo- they're the ones that usually everybody knows. They're the one. Remember, odds aren't made so who's supposed to win. Odds are made so people can bet on both sides and they win in the end. So if you're seeing a New England versus a Houston like we saw last week, they're gonna make they're gonna make New England a point or two more of a favorite than they, because listen, who's gonna bet on Houston when you see New England's flashing in lights? It's for the casual better. I mean, you, let me ask you something. If you saw Houston minus one at home against New England, everybody would be pounding yeah, everybody, that money everybody line pounding on New England. So so you don't get bets on both sides. So they have to do that. So because of that, if you're a smart better, you always have to look a little bit towards the underdog because, and that's the reason why on Thursday night football. Prime time games, that's why the underdog has won so many times because they're making the favorite a bigger favorite than they really should be. So with that said, let's jump right into the picks. We each got six picks for you this week. Dre, what's your number one pick of the week? So we got a Friday game, got the Pac-12 championship game. This is a really good game. Honestly, this is probably, in my opinion, this is one of the most... Probably the most game I'm looking forward to, only because this gonna be fun. Utah's caught up. They, they they've been looking really good lately, and we have them at minus six and a half. And they're up to six of the nation now. Yeah, they're ranked six. They they got a so, chance. So you know, and nope. I mean, well, I, I guess we got. I mean, well, this is my second best pick. The reason I'm I'm saying second best pick first, only because I want to go in order as far as Friday, Saturday, and whatever. Mm-hmm. But this is my second best pick of the week. I love Utah to win this game, six and a half. Um, I, I listen. I know Oregon's good though, but Utah has an opportunity to squeeze in that top four right there. And you know, at home, Pac-12 game. You know, I expect high scoring, a lot of points, from, especially from Utah. I, I think they win by double digits pretty comfortably, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm rolling with Utah minus six and a half. Six well, what, and a half. Yeah. What about you, Pete? Um, I'll go to the same order as you, so I'll pick that game first. That is actually my money line pick of the week. I Uh-oh. think I think Oregon's going to win that okay. game outright. Okay, uh, I'm going to trust in Herbert, who I think is a good, is a top tier quarterback. I think he should be taking top five in the draft. And I think Oregon has played a tougher schedule. They played against the Auburn, and they played against teams that I think that they beat pretty good teams too. Actually, yeah. Their schedule. So, so I think that they're their team that just got l- unlucky. They first game of the season, they got unlucky, lost on the last. 10 seconds of the game. Then then they lose that game in the middle of the year. They and then they lost like three points at Arizona State. I mean, it's not game, like they're yeah. getting blown out. Against a, a, co- a former NFL coach in Herm Edwards so, right. in, in Arizona State. So they haven't really gotten beat up or anything this year. I think they're a good team. I thought they're a solid team. And Utah hasn't really been challenged too much this year. And this is the big. This is the first time Utah is really on a big, big stage, like a, a Pac-12 championship like this. We've seen Utah win when they're in a the small, smaller conference. But now that it's Big 12, now you're on, on Friday night, you're the only game on Friday night, so everybody's gonna wow. be watching you. I don't know if they if they have the cojones to get this. Get That's this a good win. point. That's a so really good point. I'm gonna go with the senior quarterback because he's been there before. He's been in big games, and the guy who's gonna be in the spotlight next year as a top ten pick in the NFL draft with Justin Herbert. So I'm going with Oregon to win that game as my money line pick. That's of the a solid win. pick, man. And look, and even though I do like Utah minus six and a half, I mean you're making a really good point. You know, only game on Friday. You gotta, you gotta keep so the spotlight. Exactly. So again, funny things do happen. Again, I can't argue with baby. Told me money line because again, I've seen a lot of weird shit happen. But um, again, it, sh- it should be a good one. All right. And what's the second pick of the week? Well, well, no. What's your second game to go at? So second game, I'm looking at the Saturday game. We're looking at Oklahoma versus Baylor. Mm-hmm. Wow, the first the first game was a fun one to watch. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and I don't know what the mm-hmm. hell happened to Baylor. They just um, well. They, 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 they just allowed Oklahoma to catch up, which was disappointing. Yeah. But with that being said, we have Oklahoma minus eight and a half, Big 12 championship game. 
I like Baylor to cover this game. Mm -hmm. I got Oklahoma winning. For some reason, like, I'm looking at the the past couple of games. Baylor has kind of – I'm sorry, Oklahoma. (laughs) Damn, you laughed at him? (laughs) Well, listen, well, Oklahoma stepped their foot off the gas lately. Like, they really haven't been dominating teams. Like, we're used to seeing them. 28-24 TCU, 34-31. Well, Baylor, that was the game they caught up, which I give them credit for. Iowa State, 42-41. Kansas State, 48-41. So, anyways, you guys – um. You guys get my point. I, I do think Oklahoma's going to win this game, but I think Baylor keeps keeps it close. It might be back and forth, and it might be to whoever has the ball in the last possession uh, to win the game. But I feel pretty comfortable going Oklahoma in the, uh, Oklahoma winning, but p- taking Baylor with the points. Uh, I'm also going to take Baylor with the points. I'm undecided with who's actually going to win this game because, like I said earlier, this was a close game it was, it, last time they played. Super close game. Um, the game was in Baylor. This one will be in AT&T Stadium in Dallas, so it's a neutral field. Uh, it's pretty much this bet is going to come down to one thing. I'm like ignoring everything. So pretty much, you know what? Boom me. Keep booing me. I don't care. Keep booing me. Listen. Yo, we got to heal now, people. I, I think I think this is going to come down to one thing. Do you believe that Baylor just got caught underneath the, the momentum that happened with Oklahoma in the second half? Or is it, are we going to see the first half where Baylor was clearly the better team? They dominated them. They were up 28-3. They dominated Oklahoma for most of that game. And then Oklahoma got one touchdown and it started steamrolling from there. That's all so, you need is momentum. So, yeah, so it's, it's pretty much can they hold off the momentum this time? And, and with that said, to make them more than a touchdown underdog, I just don't understand it. I'm going to go with Baylor plus eight, and I, I think actually they have a legitimate shot to win that game. Yeah, this game has uh, you know upset alert written all over it. Um, but did you pick actual winner? I mean, who do you think's going to win this I game? Can't, I can't. I, listen, I'm telling you to bet with the points. I'm not telling you to bet uh, money on this you, one. Uh, telling, that's my advice: is to take the points and and take Baylor. Think about it, and let us and let and let the viewers know on two dudes in the mix who he thinks going to win the game. Mm-hmm. Just, just let them hold off. We're going to pick bit. that game anyway, so I'll be forced to. Yeah. There you go. Or else I gotta hit Vic with a chair or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so what, what's third game? Third, your third game this week. So the third game, um, where we're looking at the uh, SEC championship game. You got LSU, Big game. probably the biggest game of the week. Minus seven and a half. Number four versus number two against Georgia. Um, I love LSU to cover this game, mm-hmm. and not only that though, but. I also love the over. That's my bonus pick. Again, we're trying to keep these things in order, but the mm-hmm. over 54 and a half, mm-hmm. again, we know LSU can put up some points. Yeah. And honestly, I, I just like LSU to cover this game. Mm-hmm. I also think they're going to win by double digits in this one. All right. So I, I actually agree. I think LSU is going to dominate that game. First of all, I think they're the best team in the country still. Um, Georgia, I think, is a little bit um, kind of mm-hmm. – they're, they're at the top of the SEC, but they're not on the elite level. So – I think when they have to go in and look at the elite team, that's when they're going to lose by 10 points, maybe 13 points. LSU is just, right now their defense is starting to catch up to their offense, and their offense is already outstanding, scoring almost 40 points per game. So I think this is going to be one of those games where I don't think Georgia can get past 30 points, and we pretty much know LSU is probably going to put up 40 on them. So Exactly. There you go. You put so, my point as so far as the over. I mean, the over is 50, uh, 54 and a half. Yeah, you're going like, like to get said, near 70. You're going to get – You'll, bet over At worst, six, you'll get over 60 because, if, it, like I said, if LSU scores 40, Georgia scores 20, you'll get over 60, which will still cover the 54. But I think you'll get probably 70. So I, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. But nobody's going to catch – nobody is going to score as much points as LSU right now. And, and, and again, P, we were looking at the spreads earlier, and this is actually one of the games that bumped up a point. Before yeah. we were looking at the spread, it was at minus 6.5. And, yeah. and you were the one that sent me the early odds this week. And, yeah. you know – and I'm looking at it now, and they bumped up a whole point. Um, again, they know. They, don't they, don't don't wait till Saturday or, or yeah. yeah when, what's or, the game Saturday, right? Yeah, that game's gonna be Saturday at four o'clock. Don't, so don't wait till Saturday, guys. If you guys, it could, could be an eight eight and a half by then. So. Exactly. I won't be surprised if this thing goes up to nine. But yeah. um, right, we so. both agree. LSU minus seven and a half, and again, bonus pick fifty four and a half in, in, in that game. All right. What's the fourth game? My, so the fourth game, uh, we're looking at. The Big Ten Championship game, Ohio State minus 16 and a <laughs> half uh, against Wisconsin. I have to admit, Ohio State has impressed me the past couple of weeks. At the start of the year, they were not impressing me. Um, now that they've play, faced tougher teams, teams in the top 20, and they've dominated both of them, they are starting to impress me now. Look, I know Wisconsin could play good, but they've been, I mean, there's been certain times that they look super suspect, super shaky. Mm-hmm. You know, they found ways to win, though, but like you said, Ohio State, they, they, I mean, they actually impressed me. Yeah. And, um, and <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yo, you've been the heel of the show. I've been the laughing stock, but, <laughs> but no, uh, 16 and a half, God, I'm not going to lie, man. Again, this is another 
game that the points are going down. For, you know, people are leaning towards Wisconsin. This is a high, high spread. Yeah. And I'm going to take it. I like Ohio State minus 16 and a half. I think they went by like 18, 19 around there. But, again, I, I, I know I'm asking for it by taking the points. So. Here yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, I listen, I think Ohio State rose. I think they pick up a huge – you know, they 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 create a huge fighter. momentum. They solidify number one, and that's it. Yup. I mean, listen, if they if they're able to dominate Wisconsin after dominating Michigan, after dominating another top ten top ten team, Penn State, hey, then they have all the right to call themselves number one, the best team in the country. But with that said, I'm going to go against you. Um, this game is going to be decided in the first quarter, and I think it's going to be decided because if Wisconsin is able to run the ball, they get momentum. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Face turn. So Guys, I'm biased people behind I, I the think fucking. they'll be able to run the ball. Jonathan Taylor is one of the best. Uh, exactly. Davis is actually here to defend his boy, Jonathan Taylor. But if Jonathan Taylor gets off to a good start, we know he can run on anybody in the country. He's probably the best college running back, best college running back right now. So I think they can get early momentum. And once they're close in that game and they start running the ball, they're going to be in the game for the rest of Let the game. Let me ask you something. I don't see Ohio State um, scoring a bunch of points in the fourth quarter to pull away. If Ohio State... Slows the run down. I don't think they can. No? Okay. I don't think they can. No, and, and don't get me wrong. I don't think they can either. I think, I think Ohio State's pre- – uh, they, they, they put their defense to get to the passer. But their defense is not for stopping the run. I think you can run on that team, and I think Wisconsin has to do that early. If Ohio State kick, takes the opening kickoff right down the field – is going to start getting worrisome. But if Penn, if, and, and, if that, Wisconsin and, and that's could, where I'm at. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. If Wisconsin can keep it within a one-score game after the first quarter, I actually think Wisconsin can upset them. I think they can upset them outright. So with that said, what's the next pick of the week? So my next pick of the week, again, backtracking a little bit, uh, to go back to my money line pick, um, that, that afternoon we have uh, Cincinnati at Memphis uh, for the American Athletic Championship game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Memphis is a, a nine and a half point favorite. I like Cincinnati to win this one. Um, look, I, I think Cincinnati's been playing good football. I, and like you said, we, we have a couple of games that are rematches. The last game, it was decided by 10 points. Uh, and Memphis won that game, but I think Cincinnati does enough to pull it out this game. Mm-hmm. Again, this might be another high scoring game. Uh, I like Cincinnati to win this one outright. If you guys want to take the points, which, again, I encourage people to always do so just to be safe. But um, if you take a money line, I, I like that as well. By the way, I didn't mention on my last pick Wisconsin. That's my second pick of the week. Yeah, okay. I, 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 if, I, if you're a 16 and a half point underdog and I think you can actually win that outright, then you're damn for sure going to be my first or second pick of the week. So um, I got Wisconsin to cover that 16 and a half point nice, spread. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Instead of jumping to my extra game, because my extra game is actually my pick of the week, I'm going to go with the other game that we're going to be talking about, which is a Thursday night football game between Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bears. This is a game that I will not touch with a 10-foot pole with my own money <laughs> because I think both teams are bad. Um, Dallas is a 500 team. Chicago's a 500 team. Both of them look completely ugly. I, I don't want to bet either one of them. However, for the show, if you do want a recommendation – I'm going to go with the Bears <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to go with the Bears because you better get it ready. Then. I, I think I think I think that Montgomery can run the ball on Dallas. Dallas showed that they can't stop the run against Buffalo, and I think Chicago can do the same thing. So that's the only that's the only reason I'm going to say that Chicago's able to cover that spread. I think even if Dallas wins it, I don't think it'll be more than a field goal. I, I really think that both teams are just going to be bad. It's going to be one of those ugly Thursday night football games. But Look, but I'm going to go with Chicago plus stop. four. So, I, ironically, my best pick of the week, my best pick of the week, ironically, oh, here we go. <laughs> I, I, I told Dave to get the uh, the flags ready, get the booze ready, get the booze ready, get everything ready, get the chairs, all you're gonna, that. You're going to loud booze. It's going to be loud. Right? Guys, it's gonna drown the best you out. pick of the week for me, minus three, Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, boo you. Rain down. Rain down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, listen. Um, both teams suck. I'm not going to sit here and try to sugarcoat why I love Dallas or whatever. The only science behind this that I'm looking at it is... That, look, you're on the cover Cowboys fan? No, no, no. I can't wait to look, guys. Tune into two dudes in a mix because I'm about to tear them up. But with that being said, I look Chicago Bears. They stink. Dallas Dallas Cowboys. They stink. But you guys got to realize something right now that 
they, look, there's a lot of buzz going on with the Cowboys. Look, I'm not a fan of them, but the Bears can't they, they can't move the fucking ball from here to there. I expect the Cowboys to come out feeling embarrassed after what happened last Thursday against the Buffalo team that came into their house and did what they did. Dominated them. They dominated them. Did. But with that being said, um, I think they're embarrassed. They're going to come out. The Chicago Bears defense, I mean, they, they, they look, they, they could only hold them up for so long. And honestly, the defense, in my opinion, hasn't really been playing that well. Neither has Dallas Cowboys uh, defense, but the offense for Chicago, again, Super suspect. I mean, we've seen him lose at home plenty of times. Again, th- I-, I know this isn't a popular game. People might look towards <laughs> betting. But People might look to worth another show. <laughs> so, but sometimes, look, I look at the spread, and like Pete said, the odds makers got to make it. They got to make a spread. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're definitely not going to make Dallas Cowboys an underdog, even though they both got the same record. Yeah, they won't. But if you got to put a gun to your head, who's going to win the game? I, I I know it's a flip coin, but uh, to, to me, you is get it, out of coin. I'll tell you who's going to win. <laughs> Go back to the table. But look, but, <laughs> but, but to me, this is too obvious. Look, look, this is too obvious. The writing's on the wall. They're hyping this shit up for the Cowboys. Yeah, for the coast to be fired. That's what the writing's on the wall for. Yeah. Not fired yet? <laughs> nah, that's not what Jerry Jones said. They'll be losing to Vaughn, man. <laughs> guys, look, Dallas is bad, but they're not losing to the Bears. <laughs> they're all not right. losing to the Bears. That's my best pick of the week. They're winning by five. They'll cover the all spread right. by one. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so I'm, for my best pick of the week, it's going to be one of the not four or five main games that we're going with. It's going to be the over 64 between Hawaii and Boise State. Um, these two teams played uh, about a month, six weeks ago. Um, Boise did dominate, but it was 96 points total between the two. Oof. No overtime. Just regular 96 points. These two teams went off on each other. The spread is only 64. Even if you took three touchdowns away, they're still covering the spread. Three, four touchdowns. I don't understand why it's that low, but Hawaii has been playing really good the past couple weeks. They've won three in a row. Um, Boise State. They've been playing really well. Boise State has only lost one game all year. They've played what really well. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game on the blue field because Boise is at home. Even though it's a championship game, Boise is at home for this game. So it's going to be on their blue field. So maybe a little hard to watch, but I think it'll be a fun game to watch. A lot of points, so it'll be like a video game. So my best pick is over 64 points with Hawaii and Boise. I like that. So, do you have any bonus picks or, uh, other than that one bonus pick? No, no. Well, uh, no, just honestly, that over? Yeah, they, just that over. I love that pick, 54 and a half. Like you said, LSU is going to slam a lot of points in this game. And if for some reason it is close, I mean, regardless, it's going over 54 and a half. I, right. I don't see it being close. All right, so I'm going to give you three quick bonus picks uh, for the wow. NBA. Um Unfortunately, while while the tape is coming out, maybe you could bet the game live. I have the Suns um, minus one versus Orlando um, tonight. Game, yeah, that game started at seven o'clock, so it's oh, it started already. So, so that's why I said you, maybe you could bet it live. It's about ten minutes after, so by the time the show comes out, it'll be about fifteen minutes after. Uh, I have Atlanta plus three against the Brooklyn Nets because I don't think the Nets are really that good. They're overrated, wow. <laughs> and Atlanta Trey Young can go off on them at any point. I think he scores thirty or forty points, and Atlanta beats the Nets and. This one you have to look up on. Anthony Davis is has the flu right now. If he doesn't play, don't bet this game. But if he does play, you got to jump on the Lakers plus three against Utah because right now um, Lakers are like eighteen and three. Um, and even though Utah's at home, Lakers can win on the road. So if everybody's playing, you got to go with the Lakers. Uh, real quick, let's jump into quick fantasy. Is the fantasy playoffs? The fan- playoffs have started. Congrats to those that made it. Yeah, like me. <laughs> we can't say that about a couple other people in well, the room. Well, screw that league. I made it in. <laughs> hey, Vic, I made it in our league. Uh, listen, listen. In the in the dysfunctional Twitter boxing league. Uh, we, we don't we don't talk about that league. Yeah. We don't know what the commissioner is doing with that money, so we're not still talking about Fucking that league. Lost it and won it twenty times but, already. But but the point is that as the fantasy playoffs, uh, the top pick for most people was Mr. Madison from Minnesota. But it looks like Dalvin Cook will be starting in next week. So it looks like that was a little bit of a wasted pickup. Um, defense, listen, I've been telling you for the past couple of weeks, you got to have a Philadelphia defense, you got to have Green Bay defense, you got to have the Jets defense. They're good for this week. Next week, you can start sw- streaming towards another defense, but you got to have one of those two. The tough part that's coming up is you got to start looking at next week. You just can't look at this week. So when you start looking at next week, there's a lot of tough matchups. You have. Um, Drew Brees going against San Francisco. You got Aaron Rodgers going against um, a, a top top two or three defense. You have a bunch of tough teams that are going up against top tier quarterbacks. What do you do? Right. So listen, it's going to be a tough week. I say a couple people to pick up for next week. Ryan Tannehill. He's been playing well, and he's a guy that could go off next week. I think those are some of the pickups you should make for fantasy. So with that said. 
Two Dudes in the Mix is coming up next. We will catch you on Sunday from Blackjacks, and we'll catch you later. Any, go, any words to end this? No, that's it, guys. Make a lot of money, and uh, be safe. All right, peace. <laughs>